If you're thinking of doing the CFA, you should know that one of the hardest things about it is the sheer volume of content. There's so many modules and concepts that you'll probably forget what you studied in the first topic by the time you get to the last. And that's a source of anxiety for a lot of people and is probably the reason the pass rate is so low. In fact, only around 8% of people pass all three exams first time around. And fortunately, I'm one of them. And I also managed to do it with 90th percentile scores at level one and two. So how did I do that? Well, I used a series of learning techniques, many of which are backed by science, to understand and retain the information and ultimately smash the exams. In this video, I'm going to share five of them with you. If you're new here, I'm Harris and I'm an investment banker and CFA chart holder who studied at Imperial College London. Okay, before I start, there is a lot of overlap between these techniques, which I'll highlight as I go through, but using them together will be infinitely more effective. And you should also consider your preferred learning style. Also, make sure you watch till the end because I'm going to share a vital tip to help me smash the exams and an exclusive exclusive offer for my viewers, so don't miss out, it's genuinely game changing. Okay, the first learning technique is the PQ3R method, and that stands for Preview, Question, Read, Recite, Review. The acronym itself doesn't really matter, and you'll see variations of this, but this is the framework that I use, so pay close attention. So the first part is Preview. Now, I've mentioned this in my other videos as well, but when you're studying, it's really important that you get a map of where you're heading. Don't just open the book and start with chapter one, page one, and dive straight in and get lost in the detail. So with the CFA, first, it's important to consider all the topics that you're going to study. So for example, fixed income, equity, ethics, and so on. So you have a general overview of the curriculum. Then pick a topic, skip the material, but just read the headings, the subheadings, and the highlighted text. This will give you a flavor for what's in the topic, but also it will inform the next part of this framework, which is question. So once you've previewed the topic, ask yourself questions. Now, this should be a natural and intuitive process. Don't overthink it. Just reflect on the genuine questions that came up. So for example, time value of money at level one, when you preview the material, you might ask, what is time value of money? What are interest rates? What is discounting? So generally, once you've previewed the material, you should consider what you already know about that topic, what you expect to learn, and what questions immediately came to mind. The central point here is it's much easier to learn when you have a question in mind. You can sift through information much more effectively and extract what you need. And this ultimately forms the basis of your exam technique at level two and three, where you'll be faced with vignettes, which are passages of information, and you have to sift through them and extract the information you need. So you'll want to read the question first and then the passage because you know where to direct your attention. Okay, so now you've previewed the material, you've come up with a bunch of questions. The next part is read. So that can mean reading the curriculum or doing the lectures, whichever approach you choose, but do it with the questions in mind and try to answer them. This is a much more deliberate approach to studying. The reality is there's a lot of fluff in the CFA curriculum and by asking good questions and answering them, you'll probably grasp the core concepts to begin with and then you can fill in the blanks in the second run. Once you've been through the reading or the lecture, it's time for the next part, which is recite. Now, this step overlaps with another learning technique, which I'll cover later in the video, but ultimately you want to summarize what you learned in that reading. Did you answer all your questions and how well can you summarize the concepts in your own words? If you still have outstanding questions or you struggle to summarize the concepts, then there's work to be done. And this leads on to the final step, which is review. I'm going to keep this part short and sweet because I cover it in more detail later in the video, but ultimately either review at the end of the session or note down what you need to cover again and then revisit our future date. Just a quick note to say, if you like this content, consider hitting like and subscribe. I'd appreciate that. If you'd like to see anything else, drop a comment below. And if you want to chat directly, there's a booking link in the description. Okay, the second learning technique is the Feynman technique, and this overlaps with the second R in the PQ3R method, which is recite. Now, the Feynman technique is a great way to test your understanding understanding and to do this explain the concept to someone else or out loud as though you're explaining it to a five-year-old which means simple language only no technical language and if you can't do this you don't understand it well enough you'll find that during your explanation you'll get stuck on certain points and these are the points that you need to revisit and study more as an extension of this if you can try and actually teach others because it will reinforce the concepts in your mind and make you feel great and if you're worried about not being qualified enough don't worry there's this concept known as the knowledge curse where experts assume that everybody knows as much as them about a subject so they assume prior knowledge and that means their explanations are not as good as someone who's just one or two levels above the beginner so trust me you can teach when i was at uni studying chemistry i used to teach a level students chemistry and maths and during the cfa i did a similar thing by helping students at lower levels than me here's some actionable ways you can do this so if you're studying with other people try to answer some of their questions if not go on reddit forums find questions on there that you know the answer to and help other people out and otherwise, if you're a level two or three candidate, try to help people at level one and two, i.e. students that are a level or two below you. 
Okay, the third learning technique is first principle thinking. And this one's really important because level two and level three become increasingly application and evaluation based, which means you need to understand things intuitively from first principles, which also reduces the need to memorize. So how do you do this? Well, through lots of questioning, lots of hows and whys, and this overlaps with the Q part of the PQ3R method that I led with at the start of this video. So you want to drill right down into the core and then build up. So let's look at an example, which is valuation of bonds with embedded options at level two. Now, the value of bonds with embedded options is contingent on the path of interest rates. So let's ask a few questions. So you might ask, what is a bond? What are its attributes? E.g., does it have a fixed coupon? What's its maturity? Does it have a non-core period? Then you might ask, what is a call option? Who does it favor, the borrower or the investor? How do interest rates impact call options? How does this impact its value and attractiveness? How does this impact me as an investor? So there's lots of questions that you might ask. And as I said, this links back to the PQ3R method and that's why I led with it. If you have these questions written down and then you review the curriculum, you'll be much more targeted in your studies and you'll understand things from first principles. Generally, you want to overlearn, which means going deeper than necessary. So if you're using Mark Meldrum, watch the seminars. If the curriculum references a research paper, read it, do the long practice questions and for formulas, derive them even if you don't have to, because it's much easier to remember the root of a formula than to remember multiple formulas. Ultimately, take joy in the process of learning. Okay, the fourth learning technique is active recall. This involves reversing the information flow, which sounds counterintuitive, but to actually learn, you need to empty your brain of the information that you already have and then knit it all together rather than just keep loading it with more information. Now, of course, you need to do the initial study. However, after that, you need to organize the knowledge and synthesize an understanding. Now, the CFAI learning ecosystem has flashcards which throw out random questions on a topic and these act as excellent prompts. And you can then apply the Feynman technique and essentially summarize everything you know about that topic and then identify the gaps and go back and study again. And eventually you must get to application, i.e. you need to do questions. No point reading about something forever. Eventually you need to get to applying it and don't worry if you don't feel ready. You'll probably get questions wrong, that's fine, but you'll learn so much during this process. Ultimately, apply your knowledge. Okay, the final learning technique is spaced repetition, and this is a really important technique. So the central point here is that knowledge decays quickly unless it's revisited frequently. So it's no different to any other muscle. If you don't use it, you lose it. This reflects in Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve, which I've put up on the screen. Now, obviously this shows reviews are important, and I'll touch on that more in a second, but I want to emphasize the learning techniques we've covered in the rest of this video will also improve information retention. So first principle thinking allows you to reassemble knowledge quickly using building blocks rather than having to remember all the permutations. And overlearning results in a more thorough understanding of the concept whilst active recall increases the speed of information retrieval. But as I said, reviews are key. And as you can see from the chart after the third review, there is very little info decay, which means you need to bake time in for reviews into your schedule. You can't just study for six months before revisiting. So the million dollar question is how the hell do you do that with such a big and dense curriculum? Now, hopefully your prep provider has review videos which apply the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule, which focuses on the most testable material and helps jog your memory. Now, Mark Meldrum offers this, as does IFT, both of which I've suggested in my other videos. But either way, I would highly recommend you get IFT's high yield notes, which I've suggested throughout my YouTube journey. And these are a genuine cheat code. They're concise, well presented, affordable, and focus on the most testable material, which helps keep the content fresh in your mind, which is crucial as you approach exam time. I use them at all three levels and they massively contributed to my 90th percentile scores. You'll also get their review videos for each topic, which are excellent. And to top it off, I've secured you an exclusive 10% discount if you use my name, Harris, as a coupon at checkout. The links to all the resources are in the description. There you have it, five learning techniques to help me smash the CFA exams. If you like this, you're going to love these two on the screen. And otherwise, thanks for your time and see you in the next video.